assalamu alaikum today uh, it is going to be our last lecture for engineering systems and we are going to discuss what is a core and how do we design it so let's first start with what is a core a core is actually a central principle part of a multi story building uh, which has uh, accommodated the functions and service needs uh, which are established for the occupants so for example this is the uh, floor of a building a multi story building so this is area this is the core and it includes all um, the services like toilet facilities elevator banks janitors closet utilities mechanical facilities smoke shafts and stairs etc and the remaining this part is known as the tenant uh, space uh, or lease space we also call it so basically a core is also a spatial element that we use for a load bearing structure uh, within a high rise building system so service core in tall building design so uh, apparently from the outside when you see a building it looks like this for example but it has a service core which is the most fundamental element um, in case of tall building designs so first we design a core like this this gray structure that you can see this is the service core which starts right from the bottom and goes through and through till the end of top of the building and then we have this red structure uh, which is actually the tenant space uh, which is surrounding this service core service core is defined as an element that gathers the space necessary to provide visual physical and functional vertical connections that work effectively to distribute services throughout the building so uh, the main uh, fundamental purpose of the service core is to distribute all kind of facilities right from this ground floor till the top floor elements of core electrical and telephone piping and risers piping and risers are used for the water distribution uh, for the drinking purpose or for the washrooms or for the uh, fire fighting systems and these piping uh, also take the sewage water down to the uh, ground floor then uh, we use transportation like uh, lifts elevators and um, uh, staircases and we have toilet systems characteristics of core uh, that how uh, the shape how the core looks like what is the shape of the core it can be rectangular triangular circular or oval uh, the number of cores if there are more than one core present within a building uh, location of cores uh, whether it is centralized or decentralized off centered etc and arrangement of cores that if there are more than one core present how are how we have arranged those cores within a building functions of core uh, basically it ties the building together so that the whole building acts as one unit uh, it allows a convenient clustering of services such as toilet storage and fire services and this clustering of all these services together is going to allow us to maximize the flexibility in the layout uh, it provides access and escape by our lifts and stairs uh, since it is made up of shear wall systems because of the use of steel and uh, rcc reinforced concrete it provides the necessary lateral stability for the building uh, because it resists the lateral forces from any direction uh, it also carries gravity load so uh, basically these shear wall system or uh, or the uh, core it actually going to be uh, very efficient when we have seismic area uh, or the area where the wind load is very high core location basically we have four basic core locations central core like this right in the center which is equidistant from all the sides offset core or off center one it is far from one side and closer to the other then exterior core exterior core like this it can be uh, also uh, termed as attached uh, core it is located at one side uh, of the building 
it can be split core so split core we have one core and we then divide it into two we can put those split core within an atrium on the far sides of the building opposite sides of the building or else we can actually put it in the center like usual center core now the central core advantages and disadvantages so this is the plan of the building this building and these are flows um, and these are flow plans at different levels but the central core remains the same in all the flow plans in a section of this building this vertical line or this rectangle vertical rectangle is actually showing the through and through access of the core from ground floor to the top floor of the building so providing this central core we are actually allowing the window space this exterior space to be used as a window space as rental for the building so that uh, the occupants receive the natural light and ventilation also it is very um, convenient uh, for the access because it is equidistant from all sides of the building disadvantage is that that this core is actually occupying the depth of the building so we cannot uh, use this space uh, for the tenant use this mid zone uh, another disadvantage is that all it also requires an access corridor around its periphery so that it can be easily accessed from all sides offset core uh, as seen in the picture it is slightly decentered but it has the same advantage as that of a uh, central core that it is actually providing this exterior space to be used by the rentals so that uh, we can provide windows here to allow the to allow the natural light and ventilation inside the building and uh, it is also providing more flexibility here in its depth and uh, more flexibility in the arrangement of these spaces this is the plan this is the central core uh, sorry this is the offset core here this is the section of this plan this is the core disadvantages that at present some problem of access because it is not equidistant from all sides because this remote area is going to uh, have the larger distance from this core hence it is going uh, to be less convenient for the farther sides and corners of the building to access the core exterior core uh, it's the core which we put at the far end of the uh, building so by providing a core on the exterior side of the building we are actually left with the entire floor area to play with which is available for the tenant use and also since the core is not in the center it actually does not complicate the floor plan either functionally or structurally but disadvantage is that that this space uh, is going to be occupied with the core and this would not be available uh, for the window spaces so the offices or uh, apartments etc which are immediately adjacent to the core they are not going to uh, receive any kind of natural light or ventilation but um, this is very useful when we have to close the view uh, from a certain direction we can use the exterior core we can place the exterior floor uh, we can place the exterior core at that site for example um, if we have say industrial area on this side of the floor and we do not want the tenants to look over that industrial area or a factory we are going to uh, provide a core here to block the view so this is an example of a building uh, which looks like this in reality this is the core one of the cores going straight up one core this is the second core and this is the third core one two and three uh, the next one is split core uh, split core basically we divide the core into two along with 
this central space. So all the components present in this side of the core and in this side of the core, they are going to be accessed by this central space. And this is the plan of the building and this is how it looks like in reality, the 3D. So uh, by providing this central space, we actually eliminate the need for any peripheral access corridor. Uh, and tenant space can be uh, extended right up to the walls of the uh, core elements. Materials of core, we use reinforced concrete which is good for fire resistance, uh, its execution is efficient and uh, it provides sufficient stiffness or we use steel which is costly but it can achieve the lateral stability. Uh, it is very necessary for the core stiffness because obviously steel is also used in the RCC reinforced concrete too. So uh, relatively steel, uh, all steel core is going to be uh, quicker to assemble because of the prefabricated members and also it, we won't be needing any further consideration for the fireproofing of that area. Then we use the term mechanical floor when we talk about floor. So mechanical floor, uh, we also call it a mechanical penthouse or mechanical level. So basically this is a story uh, within a high rise building which is solely dedicated to the mechanical services or the electrical equipments. We call it mechanical floor but it act mechanical uh, but we use it for our utilities, for technical for services all type of plants are going to be there so most of the buildings either have the mechanical room uh, and they are typically placed uh, in the basement but when we talk about the skyscrapers or tall buildings so we require this uh, mechanical floor uh, throughout the structure so basically we dedicate uh, we dedicate an entire floor for all of these services and it runs throughout the structure. So as a thumb rule, the skyscrapers uh, or tall buildings, they require a mechanical floor for every 10 tenant floors, 10%, although uh, this percentage can widely vary depending upon the um, use of the building and the occupancy of the building. Mechanical floors are generally counted in the building floor numbering, but they are not accessible by the normal elevators which are used by the occupants. These floors can only be accessed by the service elevators, by the authorized people uh, for the building. That is all for the core design lecture. Thank you.